All right, we're live. Welcome to the Successful Life Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Barrier, and I'm here with my friend, Jonathan Wistman. What's up, buddy? Hey, it is good to see you. You know, uh, you. we had such a good time on your podcast the first time. And uh, since then, I think we've become pretty good friends, gotten to know each other. So I'm, I, I, I way more know who Corey is now than I was <laughs> when I was on his podcast the first time. It's been an interesting journey, I would say, and we don't have to go too far into that. But I, uh, it was, uh, I would say that, you know, you and I have built quite a friendship after, you know, I, I had already listened to your book, which we should definitely touch on because it's made a huge impact in my life. And I think any salesperson or anybody that's managing people or consultant for that matter should read the sales boss or listen to it like I did. Um, and that's what you're most well known for is yeah. your book. Well, and it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I, if people have not read my book and they're leading a sales team or they're going to hi hire somebody to lead their sales team, I would just say they're probably going to be less effective. Uh, because a sales boss is a sales leader operating at the top 1% of the profession. And let me tell you, if you can get a sales boss in your organization, then you are guaranteed a win. I would agree. It's the lifeblood of a business, right? 100%. Without it, it doesn't survive, right? So, um, yeah. So you, anybody that hasn't read that book needs to read it. Uh, super, super, super impactful. And I know that they can go back and listen to our last episode if they want more information about that. Well, really, what I want you to talk about, Jonathan, is some of the newer stuff that you're working on. And I think you've got, the, in my opinion, the most innovative way to hire people that I've ever seen. I think probably most people have ever seen. So could you dive into a little bit about who hire? Yeah, I would love to. And, you know, everyone's hearing AI, AI, AI. Well, how, how is AI going to impact my business? And we've been doing AI for the last seven years. And it's only with like ChatGPT that everybody's starting to pay attention. So thank goodness for ChatGPT. But at the very heart of what we're doing is we're using a massive amount of data coming from people that are actually doing the job. So think HVAC technicians out there turning a wrench every day. Think of HVAC salespeople. Think of dispatchers. So especially in the home service worlds, actual data from thousands of people doing those jobs on one end, what's sort of the thing that makes them tick from a psychographic standpoint, which is a whole area of science. And then we're compar comparing that with data. So we're getting actual data out of uh, tools like Service Titan to say these people that look and act like this are turning in these sort of results. Now, why is that important? Well, once we combine all that data, the data tells us ahead of time who's likely to do well when you hire them in your company as an HVAC or plumber before you invest your money in them. One, how well are they going to do? And then secondly, how long are they likely to stay in that role? Now, if as if that wasn't enough of a bargain, we've wrapped that in helping you write your job posts, push it out to your job boards, auto schedule with candidates so they get right on your calendar, score those candidates. We've got one way video interviews, all of the things to help you do that. Uh, and so our goal is just to make getting quality people inside of an organization faster and easier. You shouldn't have to think that hard to get the people that you need to grow your business. So we're about making it simple and fun. You leave the hard data to us. And it's effective. I've been through it. Like yeah. I've tested it. I've been through it in, you know, not being an HVAC, HVAC technician. Uh, it asks good questions that help vet that person. And what does that really do? It buys back your time, a significant amount of time, not to mention, and you could go into this further, like, I, and I don't know the numbers, but what? Well, what you're, you're, so what you're, what you're referring to uh, is our voice AI, uh, which Corey, you got behind the curtains to see, and we only have a select few customers using that currently, but just for your, your listeners, if, or if you're watching, Imagine on your website, you've attracted a candidate through social media or elsewhere, and they can just click a button to say, call me now. And our AI calls them, 
it sounds really human. We don't try to pass it off as human, but we say, think of me like a fast pass to a busy Disney ride. My goal is to answer all your questions about this job, me to learn a little bit about you so that I can get you connected to the right person in an organization who can get you hired quickly if we both think there's a match. And that can run 24 seven in the background. And what we're doing is we're scoring that against an uh, against what our clients tell us are important in that hire so you think about one of the challenges companies have when they especially when they're marketing on social media channels they'll get a lot of applicants coming in that frankly are just garbage right they're things that are a waste of time but they have to pay a human to go through all those so, so you've got two problems one i'm spending like mind-numbingly dull time going through candidates who are not even close to a fit and secondly, I'm taking a long time to call back that golden child that I should have called and could have called instantly if I just used to hire. And so those data points, let's just get, let's dive into that for a second. So those data points could be, have you had training in XYZ uh, field or have you gone through an apprenticeship, for example, right? Yeah. So there's a number of things. One is on our prediction models and our prediction models are based on psychographics. When I say psychographics, these are all things scientists have said are stable human attributes. So, you know, most people are familiar with like DISC or Myers-Briggs, which measure introversion and extroversion. There's all sorts of other tests that can measure somebody's grit or how do they learn or what's their preferred learning style. Uh, do they like to work with their hands? How do they handle stress? How do they recover? So what we do is we measure all of those things against people that are actually doing the job and look at which ones are successful, which ones struggle, which ones churn out. We call that a performance fingerprint, right? So that's that. those are the sort of things that you're not easily going to get in a face-to-face -face interview. So we're sending a questionnaire as part of the hiring process. Somebody answers about 10 minutes of questions and we give a score. And the score is a fit for that role, zero to 100. Again, compared to thousands of people already doing that role whose per job performance we already know. And secondly, we give a, what we call a flight risk, which is also zero to 100. Obviously, you want that score to be as low as possible, but just how long is somebody going to stay, right? If you're going to spend thousands of dollars hiring somebody, training them, equipping them in a truck, and all of the other things you provide for them, you want to know that they're going to stay around long enough for you to get a return. Right. That's right. So that's, that's the psychographic measure. Now, next to that, we have our voice AI, which can ask very traditional kinds of questions and answer the questions that those candidates have. The, like if you went through, you know, the companies in this industry, you have an HR person spend a lot of time on the phone answering the same question over and over and over again. And the hassle of scheduling that back and forth, we turn that over to an AI so that by the time you get face to face, you already know there's a high degree of likelihood. One, the person can do the job. Two, they're going to like the job and that they would take it if, if you offered it to them because they've already asked, what does it pay? What are, what are my vacation times like? And you've gotten a chance to, to also hear and listen to how, how they express themselves. So I'll tell you about my personal feeling when I was going through it is I didn't feel I didn't feel the human pressure, meaning I felt like I could ask those questions about how much pay there is, how much vacation, the questions that we really sometimes don't want to be asked, but yeah, asking we wanna, it, we want to be polite. Right. A hundred percent. And it might yeah. be the deal breaker for us. Like we might know, hey, if they can't pay me more than this, I can't take it. But we go through three or four interview stages only to find out, hey, I probably wouldn't have taken the job anyway. Or maybe there's a requirement to do X that's just a non-starter for me because I have kids I have to take care of every Thursday. And, you know, this company requires me to be on call every Thursday. Right. Those, those are the kinds of things that AI are really well equipped to handle. And you experience it like our AI has a sense of humor. Like if you ask it to meet Mickey Mouse, it, you know, will It'll laugh. <laughs> it gets humor and those sort of things. So we're we're not trying to displace the human element in hiring because hiring is one of the most human decisions you can possibly make. You're going to change somebody's future, their livelihood. What we are about is making it more humane. 
it's 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 not humane to have somebody who needs a job now to have them stand in line to go through your process that takes weeks and weeks and weeks. Meanwhile, they need to feed their family. Right. It's, it's inhumane to your employee to put them in an office staring at a computer screen, you know, looking through a thousand disqualified applicants when a computer could do that. So now you've cleared the deck and you've gotten face to face and you're not face to face with a hundred people. You're you're face to face with five people, any which five you could choose and they'd be a great fit for your company. Now you can really focus your time on getting to know them as a human and making that human connection, which is ultimately why they're going to come work for you. I would almost argue that it's better than, at least in my opinion, it's it's almost better than a human because it's not going to make mistakes by the questions that I ask. You're not going to offend anybody. Um, it, you know, it's, all, it, it's also less bias because our our interview agent is never going to have indigestion. They're never going to come, you know, just have had a fight with their spouse. <laughs> like it's going to ask the question and it's going to score it the same way. Uh, I, I call it the the great equalizer, but as you know, I'm really bullish on all things AI, and I think it's up to us to decide how do we make AI more human? How do we make it enhance the human experience? I remember I called in, I think it was a credit card company, and I was five minutes into the conversation before I realized I was talking to an AI. And I wish, you know, I, I do think we should inform people when they're talking to an AI, and that's the course we've decided to take. But I was sort of annoyed the first time. I was like, oh, they got me. They tricked me. And then I realized, wait a minute. I got helped faster. It was more pleasant. And I got the right answer. I'm like, if I have an option, I'm choosing that option every day. Yeah, every time. Every time. Every time. So, and, and that's where I see that, you know, two things to be true. AI is going to be the greatest wealth destroyer in the history of the planet. It's also going to be the greatest wealth creator on the planet. And I think every business owner has to ask themselves, how do I get myself and my team on the right side of that? Now, fortunately, in home services, you're probably not going to have an AI climbing under the sink to tighten pipes for a while. However, everything that surrounds getting that person under the sink and touching that pipe will be touched by AI, whether it's the dispatcher, the way the leads created, the way the person got hired to be there, uh, all the infrastructure that supports that human under the sink is all going to be touched by AI. You, and your, and your forward thinking companies are, are, are already playing around learning. So that, when you think about the pace of change, it used to be things would take, you know, 10 years, 50 years to change. We're literally seeing changes within inside of a month that are 10 times X changes. So if somebody thinks that they can start late and win the race or even compete in the race or even end up in the same race, so, you know, like at a marathon at, at a certain point, the judges cut it off, right? Like if you're not in under a certain hour mark, it's just like, sorry, you didn't finish the race. Well, we're right. doing that, but we're sort of like in a hundred yard dash. And you've only yeah. got, and, and I don't say that to be fear mongering. I really believe that the companies that are not investing in this, if they think, Hey, I'm going to wait it out and see if I can catch up. You, you, at some point you can't catch up for this sort of technology. You, you really have to be, on the front end of night, really think about young people. Like their lives and the world they're going to live in is dramatically different than the one they're living in today. And their best bet is to understand it. Like it, you're not putting the genie back in the bottle. I, 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 it, 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 it's sort. I find it sort of amusing and also worrisome. You get you see these people, whether in person or online, and they're arguing about is AI good or bad. The reality is it doesn't matter. You're not going to put AI back in the bottle. The genie is out. The, the only difference is which way you're going to rub that genie or the bottle. <laughs> Let's hope you're rubbing the bottle, right? Like that's the, what's going to like, what is going to happen for you is going to be the way you interact with it. And we do need really smart, heartfelt, intelligent people to say, Hey, Hey, here's a boundary. We don't want to cross. Here's how we do want to utilize this tool. Uh, and I know I've talked to you 
uh, we've started a, a group called uh, Group 1849, uh, and it's all around how do we really get involved in what I think of as the AI gold rush, where we're figuring out what are the picks and shovels that are going to make AI tools like conversational AI, like large language models, like uh, machine learning algorithms, like image recognition or natural language processing. They can put all those together in a way that can allow business owners to actually get to work with the tool rather than sit on the sidelines and go, oh, this is interesting. Oh, I wonder how I'm going to do that. Like you're, you remember the old book, you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar it's a great sales yeah. book right sure and i think is. we need to write we need to take that same mindset as you can't learn to use ai in your in your business at a seminar like right. you have to actually get out and experience it and then you're going to trigger the mind and the imagination about how those tools work so what we've done is we've assembled a group of ai experts front-end developers back-end developers that are educating themselves. And I think of AI tools, you know, new ones come out every day. They're just like Lego blocks. And with a, you give a kid a set of Lego blocks, you know, maybe the first one they follow the instruction. Pretty soon they have a whole pile of Lego box and they're building like things you can't even imagine. And they're doing it quickly. And you're right, they get how it all goes together. And that's what we want to do inside of group 1849 is assemble people who are AI first as humans, meaning they really get how do I like when they're in your business trying to solve your problem, they're like, oh, here are the tools and this is exactly how it goes together. Because if they can't build that and deploy it inside of your business in 90 days, the tools are going to completely change and they should be swapping out Legos by then. That's such that's such a good point. Uh, yes. That's such a good point because it's going so fast. That's it. And that's why. So, you know, if, if there's people listening, like, I'm curious, you go group 1849. That's sort of, you know, the the crazy mind world that we live in, uh, think and how at least really smart, intelligent people are thinking about the world of AI might not be the right one, might not be for you, uh, but it's where I'm placing my bets. Yeah. So define when you say picks and, and, and shovels, can you just kind of dig into that a little? Just give us kind well, of a real world example of what that means. Well, so, you know, when you think about the California gold rush and you had gold miners, there were people that got really wealthy standing along the side of the roads selling picks and shovels. Right. So if you think about AI as the tools, like a conversational AI or chat GPT, if you think of that as the wood and the metal, you, you, you can do some interesting things just with chat GPT by itself, but you're not going to dig a hole fast enough to get to the gold. Right. But if I take chat GPT and I put it with a little conversational AI and then I pull in an algorithm and I pull in some natural language processing and I throw in a dash of this and that all of a sudden I can do something really magical. Right. And that, that's what I mean by that is that, that we want to be the picks and shovels where we go into a, an industry and we identify what's the pain point that can be fixed and and then pick the ai tools and put them together fast and in a way that solves that problem i th what's happening right now is business people are like getting bombarded with new ai tool new ai tool and it's sort of like add one they either don't get started or they're they're looking at ai and they go oh well i can take this and now let me have ai looking for a problem and i actually want to do it the other way Let's look for problems and then look for the right AI tool to fix that, right? Because if you ever heard the thing, if all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Yes. Like if all you know is chat GPT, every problem is going to look like, how do I fix this with a hammer? And it might right. be the wrong, might be the wrong tool. So, you know, and allowing, I, I don't think the the people that are out there owning businesses for the most part want to be ai experts 
they want to solve problems. They want to compete in the marketplace. They want to create a great place for their employees. They want to have an impact on their community and they could care less that it's AI and they don't want to be an expert in AI. And so that's where group 1849 comes in is, you know, we're going to be able to shoot people straight and say, here are the, here are the tools. And more importantly, here's how they go together. I see people out there charging massive amount of money to people to sit through a course that is like so elementary that it, it's already out of date. And because it looks magical, they, these, these buyers are feeling like they got their money's worth because, you know, they paid 15 or 20 grand for a course and they feel like they now know how to run chat GPT. I don't not know. The case. It's not, it's not the, the case though. Not it's just case. not, it's not going to help. It won't help them compete in the way that they need to compete as a business. Like you, you've got to come up with very, you know, maybe it helps you. And, and, and I use chat GPT all the time. There are things chat GPT allows me to do in a day that would have taken me two weeks before. It certainly has its place. Um, but there's so many other problems that we can solve and we just want to be ahead of sort of the curve of what's the universe of tools look like. And I'd say, that I would say, I would say we're ahead for sure. I mean, if you put that much time into it, most people, you'd be shocked. Well, you probably wouldn't be shocked. There's a lot of people I, I talked to that never even heard of chat GPT, which is mind boggling. You know, it's just my brain almost melts when I hear that because it makes me feel, <laughs> It makes me feel bad for them because at the end of the day, like if you don't even know what chat is, you're probably so far behind the curve. It is going to be almost impossible to catch up. The good yeah. news is you don't have to catch up. And it's a lot of information. It's a lot to sift through. And that's what, you know, you've done. I've done. Our team has done. We've sifted through these things and found the, the, the products at work. And, it's like a shortcut to the marathon, right? It's like yeah. hyperdrive. Yeah, and just for and just from an investment, when I talk about investment, you know, it's time, it's money, it's energy, attention, and to, yeah, you know, tame. I've heard it time, time, attention, money, and energy. Tame. The uh, that's all we have, right? And so. In terms of thinking about how do we utilize AI, I think companies just want to spend their time, attention, money, and energy on fixing a problem. That's it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I agree. And guess what? The time part is, is super important here because most business owners don't have the time that you're going to need to put into this to really learn it the right, you know, the right way. It's, it's ultimately been a full-time job for multiple people. I yeah. mean, really. I keep saying, why don't they have a duplication technology? Because I'd like to just duplicate myself so I have an entire day every day to just spend geeking out on on tools. Like, I don't, you know, I'm going to, well, I guess everybody knows I'm old at this point. So who am I fooling? <laughs> but I remember the first time I held an uh, iPhone in my hand. And I swiped across that screen and I was like, now this is magic. Now, you know, now it's every day. And there hasn't really been products like that since. But every day you touch AI, I'm like, wow, this is magic. Yeah. And, and the, the potential of it is magic. People can't even imagine the world and, and where it's going. You know, and there's a good side of that. There's a bad side of it. We will solve some of the biggest problems known to mankind from disease and chemistry-based problems, biology-based problems, simply due to the compute power and how it's coming to bear with computer algorithms. Everything is, at the end of the day, a math problem and pattern recognition. I'm excited about that because, you know, I'm going to live to be at least 150, so I'm third of the way through my life now, and the future is looking really cool. Now, doesn't mean we don't have other problems we're going to have to solve. Like I just saw in Hong Kong, uh, the first $25 million fraud. Did you hear about it? Mm -mm, no. The the CFO 
was asked to wire money by the CEO, $25 million worth. And he said, no, 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 we're going to get on a phone call first, right? And that makes sense because people have been hacking emails. So they got on the phone call and he said, still sounds weird. They got on a Zoom call. It had the CEO, the COO, and one of the board of directors on the Zoom call instructing the CFO to wire the money. And all of that was AI created except for the CFO. Holy crap. And right now, the FBI is six months behind investigations of fr fraud, and they won't even touch a financial fraud unless you've at least lost $50,000. You can't even get on the list to have an investigation until your losses are over 50K. That's incredible. Right? That's So you've got that negative side of the where the world can go as well. However, it needs smart, intelligent people to be thinking about the other side of that. Like there's, and, and we've been that, you know, we've gotten that through, through, you know, throughout technology and history, we've always faced that problem. I think the only real difference here is that we're sort of compressing the time scale and we're asking a lot of people, a, a lot out of people in order to, to, to be able to handle that point of stress. So but just say people need to be less stupid. I mean, gullible, right? right. We're going to have to really get to where we can do critical thinking. And most people, including myself, we th think we think for ourselves and we don't like, yeah, yeah. When I, when I was, when I was trying to drink less, uh, it was amazing to me. I would be not, not drink for, you know, three or four days. And all of a sudden on TV, I'd hear somebody open a bottle of wine, cork, open a scotch. 10 minutes later, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you know, scotch sounds really good right now. I'm like, why am I even thinking about that? And then I'm like, oh, I just saw it on TV. Like, we just don't realize this whole world of influences that is happening to us all the time. I read a stat, uh, sorry, I'm going on and on. I read a stat today that said, G give me 300 of your likes and I can know you better than your spouse does. Like 300 likes on social me media. That, I believe it. And, and that, that's how powerful these algorithms are getting. Well, think about, you know, when we, you know, it's just like when we buy stuff, um, we don't, we're not really making those decisions. We're being fed those different data points through social media, through websites, through whatever. And those decisions that we're making are on kind of on autopilot to it. It's a little bit scary. And I really hate to even admit that because, but it's true. Whatever you're putting in your brain, there's an angle to it. So you got to be careful about what yeah. you're putting. And in there's your always brain. an angle. There's always an always. angle. Always. So you yeah. almost say, you have to just choose your angle, <laughs> right? Yeah. You, 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 let's don't get into politics, but it doesn't, you know, if you're on one side of the country or the other in some political party, like you, the, the people are so entrenched with, I'm going to have a gut negative reaction to the other side. It doesn't matter what it, what it is. I try really hard. I make myself read uh, news channels that are heavily Republican. And then the next day I'll read something that's democratic. I'll do a libertarian. And by doing that, it's it, it sort of highlights to me, you can have the exact same thing happen. And depending on how that media source wants you to feel, like it's either going to be a flattering picture of the president or it's going to be an awkward picture of the president. It's either going to be, you know, the one bad thing they said or everything good they said. So you sort of get in this like echo loop of if you if you like if you stay with one source. That's all, you, sure. that's all you're going to be hearing. And I'm sort of taking the same approach to AI. A ton of disparate views of where AI is going to head. You, you just plug into all of them. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Or, yeah but, but you have to be conscious of those decisions yeah. that you're making. I mean, you have to think about what – and it's really, you know, it, it's almost like uh, you, you almost have to disassociate from a lot of information, whether it be politics or whether it be – whatever and really just look at it for what it is at least that's how i do it yeah yeah and you do have to see two sides lots and lots of times you have to look at both sides and say well what what really makes sense all right so I mean, let's set, let's set 
AI aside, because we've probably bored like 90% of the audience that doesn't care about AI. Uh, tell me, Corey, in your in your world, what's the the biggest change that you've seen in the home services industry? Because I know you you play in that space as well. Uh, just over, say, the last year and a half. Well, unfortunately, I probably have to go to AI for that, but uh, <laughs> I think it's leaving well, AI out. We got you got to. Well, I think um, the reality, well, the biggest thing that I've seen is, well, a year and a half ago, people were still riding, you know, the the influx of business from the 2020, 2021 uh, era in that was a different time than it is now. For for example, sales, you could be an order taker during that time and you felt successful in sales. It's not that way now. It, you can't be an order taker. You've got to legitimately speak to people with your heart, not with your mouth. Um, and if you don't, a lot of companies are finding that they're suffering right now because they got in that loop of, order taking in, in disguising it as sales. Yeah. You know, in my work with a sales boss, uh, a lot of organizations, you know, sort of cyclical, but they'd be like, oh, the economy's bad. And, you know, that's why sales are down. And I take them through this mental exercise, but I think it's helpful. Like, imagine you had 100% of the market in your city or your region that you're operating in. Could you with the current size of your team handle all of that? And in most cases, the answer is no. Even in a down market, your company can't handle 100% of the business that exists. So the problem really isn't the economy. It's that the share of the pie that you used to have is no longer big enough, right? right. You just, you, you have to, you have to execute on your marketing better you have to execute on every opportunity you get at the door you you're building your customer relationship you, you, the market to feed your company and your company's families and community that is your company exists even in a down market you can't possibly have 100 percent. the problem is the 10 percent or the five percent or the 20 percent you used to have easily right is no longer enough it's sort of like if you know if you're pouring this cup of coffee and it starts to overflow. You're just not getting the overflow. There's still plenty of coffee in this cup. Right. Yeah. And that takes skills. Yeah. Trained skills. skills. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing uh, operators have to get really honest with themselves about making sure that they're back to the fundamentals and running a disciplined ship. That, and that's where your great operators who have, you know, systems in place and checks and balances, they're still going to get off the mark because they're run by humans, but they're not so far off the mark that they can't get back to it quickly. And some of these companies that got really sort of fat and lazy, they're way off the mark. And so they're going to spend a lot of the year trying to come back to that center line. Yeah. And it's, a, it, it, that, and that's a tough spot to be, but a lot of people are finding that that's the case. And Look, everybody knows that inflation's here. And for our industry, you know, we're up 70 some percent than we're from where we were a few years ago. Like, that's a pretty big jump, but it is what it is. You can focus on it being 70, 80 percent higher than it was two years ago, or you can just focus on how do I roll with the punches, so to speak? How do I roll with the price increase? Because they're not going away. So you got to figure out how to navigate the market. Yeah. Well, always good chatting with you. I know we're up against the time that we committed to getting in and chatting. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jonathan, where um, where can people find you if they want to get a hold of you for any of the various things that we've talked uh, you, about today? John, J-O-N at whohire.com. That's the easiest one probably. Or if you know me from my book, John at the sales boss. Uh, either of those uh, will get me or any business, you know, I'm involved in just J O N in my email. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, keep, I, I keep it pretty simple. 
I love it, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate the time today. Yeah, likewise, Corey. Always a pleasure to visit with you. Uh, like talking to someone who knows how to have a successful life. Pod <laughs> yeah. Podcast. There you go. There you go. Take Thanks care, my for friend. the plug, brother. You got it. See you, man.